It was only right Mr. Waffle got his waffle on with this one. Perfect. Hello there broskies, Erkin back here with another banger from Nike. We are of course reviewing on today's episode, the Nike Waffle One. So the Nike Waffle One, what's it all about? What does it do differently? And where does this sneaker draw its inspiration from? In this video, we are gonna to touch on so many things to do with this sneaker. It's got a lot of history behind it and it could be a future classic in my eyes. But first, before we get started, I have to thank Nike for sending these through. They gave me a choice with all the colors that they had with this Waffle One and it was a very hard decision. Some of these colorways, there were a few that caught my eye. Of course, you can't go wrong with the white one, but that green one, wow, wow, wow. But in the end, I went for these just because these colors are more my type. But with all that waffle aside, let's get into the nitty gritty. These did release here in the UK on the 20th of May this year. And these do retail for a price of 90 pounds. And of course, like the good little lad that I am, I will leave some purchase links down below, just so you can keep tabs on the latest prices of this sneaker. You know, some things in life are just destiny. They're fate. Mr. Waffler, more waffle than Captain Birdseye himself, got an opportunity to get the waffle ones on the channel. <sighs> Don't know about you, but whew, it's meant to be. But starting off with the box, of course it does come in your classic red Nike one. And on the product sticker, it does read Nike Waffle One. And this official colorway is Active Fuchsia and University Gold. Active Fuchsia, 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 Fuchsia? Leave it down below how you pronounce it. I'm saying Fuchsia, Fuchsia, not Fuchsia, Fuchsia, I'm saying Fuchsia. If you say potato, I say potato. It is what it is. Now this colorway is what drew me to this sneaker. Wow, wow, wow. The use of this pinky purple alongside that gold, black and white. Apart from a white sneaker, what more could you want from a summer sneaker? Now these were initially a Nike exclusive only drop, but by the time this video is out, these have probably made it to more retailers by now. Now the legend, one of the creators of Nike, Bill Bowerman. How he actually created the waffle outsole to some of the most iconic sneakers from Nike is actually a funny story. For those who don't know, he was drawing so many different inspirations in terms of its design for the outsole for his Nike sneakers. And what he did in 1971 created history. He actually poured rubber into his wife's waffle maker. And that's how we got the waffle design to some of these iconic sneakers. The first Nike waffle racer was of course released in 1974, which has gone on to inspire are so many different Nike sneakers, such as the first ever Nike Tailwind in 1978, and a lot of other sneakers such as the Internationalist, the Nike Air Pegasus, and of course the Air Max 1, the Air Max 90, the Air Max 180. And we can't forget a few classics like the Air Max 95, the 97 even, and of most recent, the Nike Sakai collaborations. Of course, being the LD Waffle and most recently, the Vapor Waffle. Without that eureka moment from Bill, none of these sneakers may have even existed. So we do have to pay homage to the Nike Waffle Racer. And this is exactly what this sneaker does. Now you can't spell life of a broski without the L. And that is exactly what I took in terms of trying to get the LD Waffles and the Vapor Waffle. But this could quite possibly be the next best thing. It's the closest you are gonna get in terms of the similarity to its design. And in my opinion, you are very spoilt for choice when it comes to the colorways. But if you are thinking of getting a pair, let's talk a little bit about the sizing. Now for me, wearing these waffle ones, it was a very pleasant experience. But when it comes to the sizing, it did fit very much true to size. Yes, granted, these do look a bit more narrower than your normal Nike sneaker. 
which does make it look a little bit longer. But I can assure you because of the mesh on the upper, there is no problem there. Maybe if you have wide feet, go half a size up if you like a more roomier feel. But because of that light mesh on the upper, you won't really have problems in terms of that squeezing feel on foot. You can actually break these in in no time. So when it comes to the sizing, for me anyway, these were true to size. But with all that aside, let's take an even closer look at this sneaker. So dive in a little deeper into what this sneaker actually involves. Of course, like I've mentioned earlier, it does have primarily on the upper that mesh. It's got that textile mesh feeling to it as well. But towards the forefoot, it does have an underlay too, which you can actually see with the mini Nike swoosh on the lateral side. And it is dotted as well. It does have that perforated look, but it is just for show. Of course, these being such a light shoe, these are breathable anyway. And we've got that classic inspirational design to the mudguard. And we've got that 3M accent on the lateral side as well, which is of course reflective. But the material on this mudguard, it's sort of between a suede and a felt material and for me personally it does feel more of a suede now making our ways to the eyelets it is of this suede material as well but this does feel more hairier compared to the mudguard now one thing i found really nice with this silhouette is of course this tongue it's not your most conventional tongue but it sort of reminds me of the nike react 55s where it's not symmetrical but it's inverted to support more movement for your ankle but moving on to the ankle liner it is of this stitched look in that university gold which is of course the same as the sock liner it isn't the most padded or comfortable sock liner, but it does the job. And on the insole, it is of course of that university gold with the pink Nike branding inside. Now making our ways to the back of this silhouette. And this is where things really heat up for me anyway. We've got that flimsy pull tab at the back in that suede material. And if you pull that down, you've got the Nike swoosh underneath that with also some writing as well. Now the heel counter is something I really took attraction to. It does have of course that suede material at the back but what's on top of that is that double plated look very similar like i've said to the ld waffle and vapor waffle but it is responsible to add more comfort and stabilization to your heel when you've got these on foot it does feel like it's nice and cupped at the back but the black contrast to the white midsole is so nice to look at but on the medial side though it does have that nike swoosh and just like we have on the insole we have established in 1972 Everton, Oregon and we've got that NSW Nike sportswear and the waffle one indented in. Now moving on swiftly to the midsole and I've got to say I'm really impressed with this foam. It's got a great balance in terms of its cushioning and ruggedness at the same time. Now it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of an Air Max sneaker for example but regardless having these on foot was a very pleasant feel and last but surely means not least where this sneaker got its waffle name from is of course the outside now it is a slightly plain Jane outsole but if it's not broken don't try and fix it. Of course we've got the black squares inspired by the waffle racer that wrap around all the way to the toe and a nice subtle touch is that Nike stamp at the back in orange which does curve over towards the hill. How much wood can a chuck chuck wood wood chuck? No I'm not gonna try that one but how much waffle can a waffle a waffle on the waffle one? Oh, that was good. Come on, round of applause, please. Uh, there we have it, broskies. The Waffle One by Nike. I've got to say, this sneaker has really surprised me in a lot of positive ways. I didn't really know what to expect because I haven't had a Waffle sneaker before. I think the closest I've gotten to one is the MD Runner 2. And that was my go-to running and gym sneaker for a while. But this one, it just takes it up a notch in terms of its comfort. But like always, we have to do this part of the show. Is the Nike Waffle 1 a buy or a buy? Now I have mentioned a lot of pros to this sneaker, but are there any cons? And if I had to nitpick a little, I guess you could say yes. But with the cons that I am going to say, these sort of disappear anyways over time. And this is of course my personal experience, but because I am so used to the Air Max Nike sneakers, putting these on straight away, there's a massive difference in terms of its comfort. If I do have to compare it to any sneaker, I would compare it to the Air Max 90 just because I wear that mostly. Now comparing it to that silhouette, there isn't as much support and of course cushioning. But as you wear these more and more, you just get used to it and they feel so snug. And that's most likely the only con I can think of with this silhouette. There literally isn't much to complain about. A banging sneaker for the summer, so many colorways to choose from, and that pleasant experience on foot, the lightness of the silhouette, and of course, how breathable it is. Now I know it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it is for me. 
two sugars please because I'm giving this silhouette a buy. But broskies, I am interested to know what you think about the Nike Waffle 1. Are you on the hunt for something different for the summer? Did you actually cop a pair on release? Or is this a total miss? Leave it all down below and I will be pinning the best comments. Anyways broskies, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. As always, hit me up on my Instagram as well because I am most active on there. But don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. And of course, until the next episode, take care.